Hey kids, today we're going to talk about dependent sources, part one. A dependent source is a source that is not a fixed value, either a current source or a voltage source. Unlike, say, a battery, right? A battery is a fixed DC voltage source. It's an independent source. Same would be true with a fixed current source. Wouldn't matter if it's AC or DC, but it's a certain value. You know, it's a 9-volt battery. It's a uh, 2 milliamp, uh, 60 hertz current source, whatever it is. Dependent sources are a little bit different. And these are not things that we would go out and buy um, you know, off the shelf, so to speak. More typically, they're used to model the behavior of devices, transistors, for example, or systems, amplifiers, for example. So there are four kinds of dependent sources. Okay? We have what are called voltage-controlled voltage sources. A little bit of a mouthful. So we call that a VCVS. VCVS. All right. We also have a current controlled voltage source. Okay, so current controlled voltage source. And then we have, those are the voltage sources, and then we have the, the current sources, right? We have the same two things but as current sources. Okay, so we have a current controlled current source and a voltage controlled current source, right? Four different things. Now on a schematic, uh, these are drawn typically with a diamond shape. So whereas an AC source, a uh, voltage source, you know, would look something like this. Usually for um, the, the controlled sources, they're, they're drawn with a diamond. So you would see something like this. Still have a reference polarity. This is not a hard and fast rule. Plenty of times, especially in electronics texts, you can find controlled sources that use the, the round form instead of the triangular diamond shape kind of thing. Um, it doesn't really matter. As a matter of fact, um, you know, it could be shaped like a pentagon. You would know that it's a controlled source simply from context because this wouldn't be a fixed value, whereas this would be something like, you know, a volt. This is a value that depends on some other current or voltage. So, for example, if this was a voltage-controlled voltage source, you know, we wouldn't say it's 9 volts. We would say it's something like, uh, you know, 5 times some other voltage, you know, voltage A. If it was a current source, so our current source symbol typically would look something like this. Right? It may or may not have a little sine wave in it. Um, again, could be round. We, uh, we might have something like uh, current controlled current source with a factor of uh, you know, 50. So we would say, all right, this current is 50 times some other current, you know, Ix. And off we go from there. All right? Um, there are... Broadly speaking, two different categories you can throw um, de dependent uh, sources in, into circuits, two kinds of ways of, of looking at the circuits themselves. They're what I like to call um, uncoupled circuits and coupled circuits. So we're going to look at um, some uncoupled circuits, what the concept behind those is initially, and then um, in a second video we'll look at coupled circuits. So the uncoupled circuits, quick example of what this looks like. All right, so I'm going to have a voltage source over here, a normal uh, independent source. We'll just hook up some RLC components to this. All right, so here's my ground. Um, I'll put a resistor over here, let's say. Another source over here. This is going to be our um, dependent source. All right, so I have a bunch of components over here. Let's call this VS. And I'll just run some values in here, or symbols anyway. We'll call this R1. This is minus JX sub C. 
R2. Um, call this R3, pretty inventive. R4 and uh, JX of L. And I'll label a couple of points. We'll say this is point X, node X, and we'll say that's node Y. So this source right here is going to be our uh, dependent source. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to say this is a voltage controlled voltage source. The voltage out of this device thing, whatever you want to call it, that source, is not a fixed value. It's not going to be, like I said, you know, one volt at an angle of zero. It depends on something else. So in this case, we might say, oh, this voltage is 10 times Vx. Right? So whatever Vx is, this is 10 times that value. Right? Now, how do we solve a circuit that utilizes a dependent source? Well, in the uncoupled form like this, it's a fairly straightforward exercise. Uh, what you would do, two possibilities. The first one is you would simply solve this first half for whatever Vx is. Now, this is why I like to call these things uncoupled, because you could, you could sort of get rid of this little line here, and you'd have two sort of separate independent circuits. I mean, it's ground, right? They're not connected any other way, just, just a, a common ground. That's it. So you could analyze this independent of this, find out what Vx is, and then just plug a value in here. So, you know, for example, we would say, well, um, Vx could be found with a little voltage divider rule. I'll take my source, Vs, multiply that by the um, impedance of the thing we're interested in, which would be R2 in parallel with minus Jx of C, divided by the total impedance, which would be that same thing, plus R1. All right, so that would give us this voltage right here. That's Vx. Whatever that is, I multiply it by 10. That's this voltage. And then to find Vy, I can do another voltage divider. All right, so we take the thing that we have an interest in, which is this 10 Vx. And we multiply it by the divider, the thing we're interested in, R4 plus Jx of L, divided by the total impedance, which is uh, R3 plus R4 plus Jx of L. All right? And, uh, you know, we come up with some particular value. Now, you could also, if you had a kind of a dynamic system and you wanted to write Vy in terms of Vs, all right, um, you could just take this Vx term right here, right, and that put it right in there. So you just stick this in here, and you would have um, a value for Vy in terms of Vs. So that is something that we would typically do with maybe um, an amplifier model, okay? For an amplifier, we would have an input and an output section. So basically, we would just sort of draw a big triangle around this thing. And we would say, OK, here's our input. So this R2 minus Jx sub C would actually represent the input impedance to the amplifier. R3 would represent the output impedance of the amplifier. And then this 10 would be the amplification factor. And of course, this over here would be our load. So we could write it that way and say, oh, I've got you know, a certain percentage of signal that comes in that gets actually to the input of the amplifier that gets amplified up. And there's some little interaction between these two things. So we would ultimately wind up with a loaded gain calculation for this particular circuit. Right? So that's the way we would approach the uncoupled thing. Now, you can do something really cool with this, which is if you look back at sort of combining these two things, right? You can take these reactance values, the X of C and the X of L's, and you could replace those with the reactance formulas, right? In general, the general X sub C, the magnitude of that is going to be 1 over 2 pi FC, and of course for XL, it's just 2 pi FL. If you plug these in here, right? then what you wind up with is a, an output voltage that's a function of frequency. So you can do something really cool with this. You could um, maybe write a, a computer program 
you know, uh, in um, like C or, or Python, something like that, or you could even do this in a, uh, a spreadsheet where you would cycle through in a loop values for the frequency. So you would start at maybe, you know, 10 hertz or something like that, compute values for your reactances, plug them into this equation, and you could get a particular output voltage. All right? Or you could simply take the ratio of Vy to Vs, and in other words, do it as a normalized value. Then you would increase the frequency, do it again, increase the frequency, do it again, and you could wind up determining how much signal you have at the output, something that would look like this. All right? We have a little frequency over here, and this would either be a voltage or, like I said, some kind of ratio we wanted to do it as an absolute voltage. All right, this would be Vy out here. And you can see what's happening. So as the capacitor values um, uh, decrease, you know, the, the reactance values decrease as frequency goes up and X of L gets bigger, you know, you might get some kind of interesting curve out of this thing. All right. Um, so we'd actually be doing an AC analysis. You know, in a simulator, when you put the circuit in there and you call up AC analysis, essentially that's what this is doing. It goes through at one frequency, figures out all these values, you get a voltage, increments the frequency, does it again, increments the frequency until eventually you know you hit some upper limit frequency. So this is really just a whole series of individual frequency calculations and you just sort of you know connect the dots if you will and you wind up with your response for the system. All right. So like I said you could do that in a little maybe a while loop in a Python program or a C program or if you're feeling really masochistic, you might want to do that in BASIC, right? Um, but that's the basic idea behind a, um, a dependent source that's in an uncoupled configuration. So in the follow-up video to this, we'll look at what happens when we have a coupled system. In other words, the dependent source can actually affect the control parameter, right? That's kind of interesting.